If you want a chance to play poker for a share of $10 million for free, then I've got the tournament for you. If you play in my weekly free-to-play True Geordie Poker tournament this Thursday at 7 o'clock and you finish in the top 50 places, GG will send you a ticket to play in the First Step Satellite for the WSOP London Circuit Tournament. That means you can go from a free-to-enter tournament into a million-dollar prize pool. If you want to get involved, all you have to do is click the link in the description below, down Download and install the GG Poker app on your computer or your phone. Create your account, which is super fast and easy. Go to tournaments, search True Geordie, and then click register. And for that tournament as well, by the way, it's a 1000 tournament dollar prize pool, $100 if you're not me out. And I will be streaming this Thursday with the poker legend, Charlie Carell on YouTube. So come and hang out, join in. If you want to get involved, don't forget, you've got to be over 18, T's and C's apply, gamble responsibly, and you have to be in the UK or Ireland to take part. But for now, Enjoy the video. Welcome back to the kickoff today. We're talking the transfer rumours in the world of football. I'll look into the website, do a bit of digging so that you don't have to. The main one I'm seeing right now is PSG have made Tottenham and England striker Harry Kane their top priority this summer. Obviously, they're losing Lionel Messi, so they need someone who can create and score. And logically, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, Harry's got one year left on his contract. They have a lot of money. Seeing him in Mbappé, Mbappe would be great together, but it looks like Mbappe is fucking off soon. So for me, he would probably view the goal record in the Premier League as more important than a title in France. Personally, if I was Harry Kane, I'd be pushing for a Real Madrid move or a Manchester United move. It does feel like Daniel Levy is just going to hold on till the bitter end like a twisted ex. Uh, and I think the day Harry Kane actually walks out of Spurs, it will probably feel like a relief and freedom for him because don't get me wrong, like, you know, he signed the contract and he's a grown man and he knew what he was doing when he was accepting all that money. But there's been countless times where he should have been let go. I just hope for his sake it's not too late, you know, and that the version of Harry Kane after another year of Premier League football, we don't know if he could get injured or anything can happen. I hope he's still capable of achieving at least a trophy at that stage in his career. Now I want to Man City, Bernardo Silva, who has been a key player for them in the last few years, has had received an offer to join the Saudi League. I mean, what a player, but at 28 years old. Yeah, all right, money is, is amazing, but it would be such a shame to see someone who's an elite performer go to a league that are, is becoming something clear. But I just feel like that should be something you're looking to do in your 30s. Yeah, like he's, he's late 20s still. He's still in his prime. And for me, it would just be a waste of his talent. All right, you want to go to Barcelona, go to Barcelona, have a few years there, then do the Saudi League. It just would feel like such a fucking waste. I think he's one of the best midfielders in world football. Kyle Walker at Man City, on the other hand, is in a really interesting position because the rumors are that he is still in contract talks with Man City. He's 33 years old. He's seen as a uh, you know, one of the elder statesmen of that Man City team. He's an absolute winner and a top defender. However, wafting his dick around on a Sunday pub roast, it's just mental what kind of character he is. It seems like Pep still wants to keep him on board, but the frustration is clear. Bayern Munich are also interested in him. He's a top player and I could quite easily imagine him going to Bayern Munich, but I think for him, I don't know if mentally he could handle becoming a second fiddle right back which Pep will probably want to do that transition with him still on at the club he doesn't want to probably start from scratch and if things do go wrong you need safety Steve you know there with Kyle Walker ironically the guy who has to stick around in public but he's a solid bet as a defender and has proven in a treble winning season at 33 he's still that guy another big Saudi pro league signing could be that of Son at Spurs now Spurs potentially losing Kane and Son I'm not even just saying this they'd be in a relegation battle they are so fucked if they lose both of them so you already know Levy is not going to let that happen and Levy has also proven like he does not have the capability as a chairman to even know how to replace those guys he really is being found out as a club owner what he is probably going to do is try and hold on to both of those lads as long as humanly possible but with a 51 million pound bid for a 30 year old he will be tempted but I just don't see him him moving because 50 million as much as that's decent value for what Son offers they just can't replace him and if you can't replace him he's invaluable so I don't see that happening one of the biggest deals of the summer though will without doubt be Declan Rice 
to Arsenal. He's 24 years old. He's just won a trophy with West Ham. What a, an achievement that was. And he is ready to agree personal terms and become an Arsenal player, it seems. I think this is a mega signing for the club. I think he will take them up a level. This is one of those moments where you look at a club building towards something you go, you've nailed that. That is a perfect signing, perfect moment, perfect club, and potentially could be something that takes them a lot closer to Manchester City, as a starting 11 especially. We're looking at 90 million currently, but I think that deal could quite easily end up over 100 with add-ons and all of the reward bonuses that West Ham will get, and he'll be worth every penny, and uh, my only envy is that Newcastle aren't in that position to make signings like that yet, because that is just a, a brilliant signing. Speaking of Newcastle, we do look to be in second place for James Madison. It appears that because Spurs have the London factor, living in the capital may be something he pre prefers. I'm not sure that's the right move. You've got Harry Kane looking at leaving, Son now being linked with a move away. The club doesn't look like it's going in the a direction that you know of. Yeah, they've signed a, a decent manager apparently. I mean, I don't know how good the guy is because as we've seen, going from Selic to the Premier League is a fucking huge jump. But it's the unknown Spurs. While I think yeah, Madison and Son and Kane would link up great together. Is that going to be the case? We don't know. What we do know about Newcastle is we've got Champions League football. They don't. We are on the up. We don't know if Spurs are. If anything, Spurs look to be in a regression, in my opinion. So I think that he would link up great with Son and Kane if they stay. But I think in the long term, this may be a bit of a mistake if he doesn't come to Newcastle. Because we are guaranteed to be heading in the right direction. We might take a step backwards next season through suffering with Champions League football. I don't know. But in the the long term I think that would be a solid move for his career. Now, it would appear that Marcus Rashford is on the verge of signing a mega deal with Manchester United to become the highest paid player at the club. He's 25 years old. He has been an absolute match winner for them um, this season, just gone. You know, the amount of games where I see Man United underperform or struggling for a goal, and he was the guy to pop up. And it wasn't just him. Obviously, there's a few other, you know, top players there. But when you've grown him at the club, you have to understand that there's a value there that you're not signing him. Are they overpaying for what level he is? Probably, but they never actually had to sign him. He was homegrown, so there's a value in that. There's a value in him being English. There's a value in the brand of Rashford. What he brings to Manchester United as a football club. For me, he is, you know, a great brand ambassador for Man United, and that value can't go, you know, unnoticed, especially with what some of the other players at the club have been accused of. You know, he really is keeping the fucking team going on that respect. I've over, you know, I've wrote him off at times and, you know, after that bad two years he had, I thought, wow, you are finished. So the same comeback last season the way he did, I've got a lot of respect for him. Overall, yeah, are they overpaying slightly? Yeah. But they need to keep all of their quality players, and he is without doubt one of the best in the side. On to Kai Havertz, who has no intention of signing a new deal at Chelsea. The 24-year-old is now a target for Arsenal. This is a bit of a weird one. I think he wasn't their primary target, but he was high on the list. It would appear that, you know, he wouldn't be playing that number nine role, but he, ha he is versatile, and, you know, if Jesus picks up an injury, someone who could do a job there, I still think they need goals from elsewhere, but playing him alongside Odegaard with, you know, Rice in behind, for example, that would be quality. But I just think that Havertz has never reached his full potential at Chelsea because he's playing in the wrong position. He's playing for a side that doesn't have a cohesive team spirit, a plan, a manager who's been consistent there. Like everything's been a wreck. While I don't think he set the world on fire there, I also think that there's a lot more ability there than we've actually seen fulfilled. And with Mikel Arteta building such a young team injecting a 24 year old in there who has ability could be a really shrewd bit of business it could also be one where people go Chelsea have done you there he wasn't good enough at Chelsea and it wasn't the coaching it's actually him he's just not that good I'm a bit on the fence but I'm gonna back Arteta that this could be the right move for them if they don't overpay because for the level he's been at he's not worth that much now England goalkeeper Jordan Pickford could potentially be signing for Manchester United. We've got David De Gea angling for more money. Man United fans pretty unanimously have given it the thanks for the memories, but it's time to go. Once the fans start saying shit like that, and a lot worse than that actually at times on Twitter, it's over. I think Man United have just held on to him because they've had him for so long. He is a solid goalkeeper, but has been underperforming lately. And I think it is probably time to transition. The problem for Man United is, is, is he a priority? I'm not sure, but it, J Jordan Pickford would take up a hefty chunk of a, of a transfer budget. 
So they need to think about this because at, at 29, uh, as much as Pickford is older for a footballer, he's still pretty much in his prime as a goalkeeper and goalkeepers do play longer. It could be a shrewd bit of business. It's a tricky one with Pickford because you never really know how good he is because at Everton, you suffer that many fucking shots on goal. You can't not have decent stats of like saving shots because you're getting fucking shot at all the fucking time. But their goals conceded for, for where they are in the league was quite average, which given the fact that they're low in the league, it shows that their defence wasn't really the main problem. I mean, I'm not saying it was good, but scoring goals was horrendous for them. I do think Pickford is a decent goalkeeper, but because he's English, because Everton desperately need to keep a hold of him, Man United would probably have to overpay for him, in which case it might make more sense for them to go, do we just give David De Gea what money wants and fucking crack on and get, what, get the things that we're desperate for in but for me I would I would say Man United should be replacing David De Gea now and I do think Pickford would be probably a slight upgrade on that However, is he enough of an upgrade for the price that they'll have to pay? Probably not. Eric Ten Hag has a seven-man striker wish list. He's basically saying to the owners, look, you can't fuck this up. Please don't leave me with a wag host again. Not another one. He's literally gone like I I him, if not then him, if not then... Do you know when you're sending someone to the shops and you really don't trust them? That's what he's doing. If I just give them every decent striker in Europe, they'll not fuck this up. The interesting thing about the Ten Hag situation is how does the same of Manchester United ongoing conflict with their transfer plans you know I've seen this with Mike Ashley before he left Newcastle he made sure like he he spent as little money as humanly possible and left us in the worst state possible before our owners came in and I wouldn't put that past the Man United owners. Guardiola has dismissed the link with Mbappe. We all know the club he wants to go to, basically saying Real Madrid. I mean, thank God, to be honest, because on the one hand, I'd like to see Mbappe in the Premier League, but at Man City, fucking hell, that would just feel so bloody pointless. You know, it's the one club where it really doesn't matter that Mbappe doesn't defend. It's just like, yeah, fuck it. You know, we keep the ball 95% of the game anyway. He would be such a perfect fit for them, don't get me wrong. Part of us would like to see that three-headed fucking monster of De, De Bruyne in Haaland and Mbappe together just to see how fucking amazing that would Harlem Globetrotter shit Galactico 2023 but it would just kill the Premier League in a, in a fucking heartbeat it would render Declan Rice going to Arsenal just point yeah fuck it fuck it why bother? Chelsea are set to uh, welcome in Cuckoo from Leipzig in a deal worth up to 63 million. I'm excited to see how he does. I think that could be a really good start of the summer for them. As a Newcastle fan, you know, we're competing for Champions League spots now. This is the sort of transfer I'm like, ugh pretty good that I'm really interested to see how Pochettino shapes this Chelsea side because if the Pochettino sides of the past or anything to go off there'll be battle there'll be pace and there'll be creativity and much more of a return to Chelsea's bastard mentality of the old days Neymar now wants to stay at PSG of course don't be wrong I love Neymar right at Barcelona beautiful unbelievable footballer you know but let's be real he is like a fighter who just won a title too early and just sort of kick back and relax he's the Conor McGregor of of football like amazingly talented but is just sort of happy to just chill has earned so much money you're not going to see him doing the dirty work that is required in a Premier League side for example he ain't coming to the Premier League ever it'll be Neymar to PSG for the rest of you know until they can't be arsed with him and then he'll go to Saudi or somewhere like that Son apparently was offered 100 million by the way to play in Saudi Arabia Jesus Christ apparently he'd be playing alongside Karim Benzema and N'Golo Kante fuck me that is the team Arsenal are in talks for Timber Timber <laughs> I was uh, trying to prize the defender away from Ajax this summer he's 22 again Arteta look at the right kind of players in my opinion timber and rice i mean the spine of that team there's one thing that i learned from watching uh the sir alex ferguson era is building a strong young spine that can stay within your side for seasons on end and maintain dominance by doing that you build a relationship they grow as players together they're more able to adapt to each other's game at that age this is a, a brilliant signing if it comes forward for us especially when their title challenge really fell apart when they got injuries at the back this is a one that they should not be turned away by just by the price 
They've got to get this done. This is a great signing. So that was the roundup for the transfer talk this week. Don't forget, I'm playing poker this Thursday. You lot, no matter how good or bad you are at the game, you can play against me for free with the potential of winning in the prize pool of a thousand tournament dollars. And if you knock me out, you get a hundred dollars in cash in your account. It's a great offer and it's a good bit of fun. I'm going to be live streaming it on YouTube, 7 p.m. on the main channel. But anyway, thanks so much for all the support. We're in the middle of moving studio right now, so we'll be in the new studio soon. But thanks for watching, like the video, and I'll see you later.